Hello, I am Mary Poplin. Welcome to the webinar. We are going to be starting here now that it is 10 a.m. I wanted to introduce Ben Brownlee. He is our Curious Turtle demo maker extraordinaire. He's amazing. If you haven't been to CuriousTurtle.com, please go there. But he also does Mocha's Fundamentals, which if you have ever watched one of my tutorials and been floored at how fast I talk, uh, Ben Brownlee is your man because he talks wonderfully slow, steady, clear, and a bit like it's a nature show, so you'll really enjoy that. Um, <laughs> uh, if you want to find more about Mocha Fundamentals, you can go to our website or you can go to CuriousTurtle.com. Our website is www.imaginarsystems and Ben's is CuriousTurtle.com. Um, we're going to be going over advanced techniques for Mocha and After Effects, and without any further ado, I'm going to pass this over to Ben. Hello, hello. Uh, hello, and thanks a lot, Mary, for that. Um, fantastic introduction there. I'll try to talk slowly and clearly like normal. Um, yeah, we're going to take a look at a couple of different shots uh, in this webinar. Uh, and the sort of main reason that we're going to be looking at, at these particular ones is that I think it shows a nice way of being able to do some, some interesting stuff with Mocha that you might not be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and also, you know, shows how we can start to reuse and recycle tracks to do uh, some particular jobs. So we'll take a look at our first shot here. Uh, what we're going to do with this one is we've got uh, a couple of people running through the forest here. And what we needed to do was make sure that this looked like it was early morning. So one of the ways that we can do that is to bring in a sun into there. So we're going to use, uh, we're going to track this in and add a bit of sunshine in there. And another thing we had to do was we had to try and animate up this little guy here. So this is a, a sort of static sign right now. And instead of just doing a sort of straightforward insert, we're going to do uh, show you another little different way of doing that insert there, which gives you a bit more sort of flexibility when it comes to animating things up as well. Uh, it's also going to be the same sort of technique that I use when I do uh, a lot of paint work. So it's, uh, it's quite a good one. So without any further ado, let's take a look at how we sort this out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come and draw my first spline. And this is just going to be a tracking spline. Now, I'm a firm believer of uh, keeping, let's just do this here. Yeah, so I'm a firm believer of keeping our sort of tracking data and, and shape data on, on separate splines, as we'll see throughout this. So I've made a little shape here that just kind of tracks around my signpost. And I'm not making it too too perfect or anything like that. don't really need to. And I'm going to come down to my motion, and I'm going to turn perspective on. Uh, and that's because this is a nice flat plane here. So if you're not sort of familiar with the difference between uh, Mocha's planar tracker and sort of regular point tracking, is that Mocha doesn't look for individual sort of single points of interest, so individual sort of features. What it's going to be doing is it's going to be tracking this whole texture all the way through. So by giving it a decent sized texture to work with, I'm actually maximizing the, uh, the chance of getting a perfect track on the, uh, the first go through. So if I come over to the top left and to my layer controls, I'm going to just label this up always try to give my uh, layers a, uh, a good name there. And because of the way that I'm going to be doing the, uh, making the, the lens flare for the sun, I'm going to do a 3D camera solve. And the 3D camera solves are going to be uh, done using two, two tracks, at least two tracks. So what I have to do is try and find a, uh, another way of, or another point, actually, to, to track in. So we've got tons of good points we could do. I could track something along down here, but because that's in the same sort of general um, distance to the camera as this, uh, as my first shape over here, that's not really going to be uh, or give enough information for the Mocha camera solver to get us any, uh, any decent data. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a point that's quite far away from the camera or at a different distance to the camera than my first shape. So I could try and get tracks in over on this side here, but as we've seen in the clip, not just one runner, but both runners will go through 
the whole of the left side. So that's not a particularly great place to, uh, to be. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to draw another shape over on the right hand side. So towards the back, sort of near the background here. And again, I'm going to make this quite a, a big sort of texture or a big sort of shape. And I'm going to turn off uh, shear rotation and scale. So I'm only tracking the translation. Because it's this far in the distance, it's so far in the distance, actually only the, I only need the position data really. So that's the, uh, the translation data there. And I'm going to call this one background track. There we go. And let's just uh, track these two forward. And I can track these things uh, simultaneously. And that's one of the great things about Mocha actually is that we can set all of our tracks up and then just yeah have them going. Now take a little look at what's going to happen here. So I'm going to stop this for a second. And what's going to start to happen is that we're going to start getting some of this other foliage coming into the edge of our shot here. Let's track it forwards a bit more. And what I'm doing is I'm waiting and watching to make sure that this doesn't affect our track. And so far it looks like it's uh, it's not done anything too bad for it. See so if I sort of scrub the way back through there, it still looks like it's holding on quite nicely. And the reason for this is because we're tracking through this texture, if if we have things like a, a bit of noise or a bit of motion blur or something something into the frame but doesn't affect the whole sort of the general uh, the general texture, Mocha is very, very good at sort of seeing through that and keeping the track nice and steady. And another thing that Mocha does is that it keeps the shape data that we see here and the actual tracking data that it's generating separate. So the cool thing about this is that what I can do now is I could, if I wanted to, I could move my shape data a little bit over here and let's still keep, keep that tracking through. So say for example I wanted to make sure that this uh, foliage in the right hand side didn't affect my shape. By moving this shape data over I'm actually telling Mocha to to start to think about uh, yeah, tracking this texture instead. But the track data that we've got is going to be uh, unaffected. And let's take a look at that. So now we've got both of our things tracked through. What we have to do is check that the tracks are, are looking right. So we do that by using a combination of the surface, which is this uh, little blue, zoom in a little bit here. I'm holding down Z and then clicking and dragging to zoom in and out, and holding down X and clicking and dragging to sort of pan around. So we have a little surface here. So the surface is the tracking information that we've got. Uh, and we've, it's, it takes it out as the, the sort of, yeah, the, the plane that we've tracked through. And if I turn on my grid here, we can see how that would sort of just spread out a little bit. So the grid here is absolutely fantastic for checking to see whether our data looks right or not, whether our track is perfect or not. So if we take a little look around here, we shouldn't see any problems with the, uh, with the grid here. And if we start to see the grid start to sort of shimmer or, or move in a weird way, then we know that our track uh, isn't very good. Uh, we have to retrack it or track something else. So the uh, the sign at the front is looking pretty cool. So let's take a look at our background one. And remember, this is the one that we uh, we move the shape data on. So I'm not interested in what the shape's doing. I'm interested in what the uh, the surface and the grid is doing. And if you see that through, I know that the uh, the webinar frame rate's not fantastic but you should be able to see that and if I turn uh, turn my shape yellow you should be able to see the shape moving around when I keyframed it but the surface and the grid are actually standing nice and solid still so we've still got a really perfect track out of that even though I messed about with the actual uh, shape that we were tracking through so that's cool all right, let's, uh, we've got our two tracks now, so let's take that information out into After Effects. So I'm going to start with our, our sign track here. Let's actually zoom back in. So 
I've got my surface set up now as if we were doing a regular sort of, uh, sort of screen replace. So this is this is generally what what people do if we wanted to replace what the the contents of the sign were, just with a uh, a simple still image or even a moving image. Uh, we we could do that just by setting the uh, the surface up like this. But I'm going to use a slightly different technique. Hang on a sec. So just let's just export out that tracking data. If we, yeah, if we were taking it out to a corner pin, uh, we've got all of our little different choices here. And I would probably just come in and use the After Effects corner pin that supports motion blur and, uh, and be done with it. Now, of course, uh, Mocha Pro supports lots and lots of other different sorts of uh, export tracking data, uh, including, yeah, if you were going out to Nuke or Boris Continuum Complete or Fusion or uh, Avid. But we're going to be concentrating on After Effects for, the, uh, for, the, uh, for this webinar here. But actually, I'm not going to take this out as a regular After Effects corner pin. Well, I am, but I'm not. I'm going to take this out as an After Effects corner pin that supports Red Giant Warp and Mocha Import. And let's just save this out. And let's save it to the, uh, to the right place. There we go. And I'll save this into a place called Ben's Tracks. There we are. And let's call this one Sign corner pin. Okay, cool. So that's that's taken out as a one straightforward piece of data. What I'm going to do now is just adjust my surface. There we go. And this is the, again, talking about that sort of separation between shape data and track data. The surface really is just sort of all about what the, uh, the tracking data is. So I can adjust that without actually affecting the, um, the the shape at all, so it's just going to be affecting the the tracking data that I'm going to be taking out, or the the points of the data. So it's not going to be affecting the underlying track; it's just going to be affecting what I take out. So this will all become a bit clearer once we're a bit further in. So again, we'll take that, save that to the clipboard, and I'm going to call this one corner pin large. There we go. Right, and let's now pop in to After Effects. There we go. Right, so I've got my exact same shot here in After Effects. And let's just scrub through that. There we go. No magic, no uh, no playing around there. So let's uh, just duplicate this up just with uh, Control D or Apple D. And I'm going to open up my Mocha Import. Now Mocha Import is a separate script that's available from uh, ascripts.com and mammaworld.com. And if you do a lot of work with Mocha, this is absolutely invaluable. Um, it it doesn't do anything that you couldn't do really with uh, with just you know your your regular Mocha tracking data. It just helps you do things a little bit uh, a little bit easier, a little bit faster. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to load in my tracking data here, and let's find Ben's tracks, and let's do the corner pin there. That's the first one we took out. And now I can take this out or actually bring in this data as either a corner pin, a move, a stabilize, a stabilized pre-comp, or create After Effects track points. Now the one we're after here is this stabilized pre-comp. This is really, really super cool. I'm going to hit apply on that and it's going to go away. It's going to have a little think and it's done. Let's move my window over here and let's just play that back. And you can see the huge difference that's made. Well, actually, it hasn't really made any difference on the surface. Because what it's doing, if I just solo that layer out, what it's doing is it's just created, and let's just double click on that to open up the pre-comp there, it's created a stabilized pre-comp based on our uh, surface that we had in Mocha. So, oh, not that one, there we go. So you can see that is exactly the same shape as the surface that we had in Mocha. Keeps the same movement as we had in the original shot. It just helps us go in and isolate small things. Now, this is the um, uh, actually quite a small, uh, a small surface for what I want to do with it. So I'm going to just delete this, and let's just duplicate out my layer again. 
come back to Mocha Import Plus one more time, load in my corner pin large, and now you'll see why I did it this way. Again, stabilize precomp, hit apply, has a little think, and now I've got the exact same thing, except with a slightly bigger border around it. So if I double click on that, you can see that's still nice and stabilized out there. Just we I have a, a slightly easier time because it's a bit more in, in proportion to how it was. There we go. So what I'm going to do is instead of having a little flat character in there, what I'm going to do is have this little fella. Oh, hello. There we go. Hello. So, yeah, I'm just going to replace that inside. So let's come in. Uh, I'm going to make a new color solid. Actually, let's just use a fill here. Just do this nice and quick. And let's bring in our animated man over the top there. And we'll just scale him into place. So it's going to be a little bit kind of rough and ready right now, but that's going to be okay. And let's just see now how that looks in with our regular piece of footage. There we go. So just by replacing that in our pre-composition uh, pre here, our stabilized pre-comp, it's then gone in and we can very, very easily do some quite sort of yeah complex little um, little things without having to go in and uh, you know try and readjust things or uh, you know destabilize things because the Mocha script has done that all for us. And it's really it's super super cool. Uh, and we can come in, we can add a little bit of blur to this. Uh, let's actually just do let's just do a bit of a fast blur on this. Just blur this out. It's one of the nice things here. Let's do a little blur. Actually, we'll do a BCC Gaussian blur on this one, on our little man, just so he fits in with the, uh, the background just a little bit better. And we can even, actually, we can even put a bit of noise on there as well. Let's see what we've got for our noise. We can actually go in. So our effects, BCC film style, and we can either do a match grain or maybe just a little bit of fast film grain there. Uh, and I can do some RGB grain. Let's bring that out. I know this actually is probably going to be very difficult for you to see when the, uh, the webinar sort of compresses stuff quite a lot. But what I'm going to do is try and just keep that try medium grain so you may be able to see that a bit better. There we go. So just doing a, a couple of little things there means that we can very, very easily start to sort of fit this into our scene a little bit easier. There we go. And for the final composition, um, I would spend a, a little bit longer time maybe coming in and just, you know, uh, matching up the chromatic aberration on the on the lens and sort of, yeah, sort of just blending this in a little bit better and also putting in the same sort of shadows over there. But uh, we don't really have uh, a lot of time for that right at this moment, so we're going to skip all of that bit. Hopefully you get the idea of what's going to go on. Okay, cool. So now we've got our little man there. Uh, we now need to come in and generate up our uh, camera, our 3D camera solve. So let's pop back into uh, Mocha for that. Here we go. And, okay. So we've got our sign track, we've got our background track. Let's come in and now use those two tracks to go to our camera solve here. So a camera solve module is going to take the uh, the tracks that we select, let's just select those two, and it's going to then generate up a yeah a 3D camera that we can then use in other applications. And it's actually very, very simple. 
uh, with, with the settings of what we can do. We can either tell it to sort of guess what kind of, uh, what kind of camera it's going to be, that's the auto. If we know we've got the camera on a tripod, it's going to be a, a pan, tilt, zoom type of thing. Uh, or if it's a moving camera, say for example it's on uh, dolly or crane or even handheld, we're going to be choosing either the small parallax change or the large parallax change. Now, the difference between these two is just how much, um, sort of really how much depth or how much change uh, in position there is from the foreground and the background. If, you've, if you're working with a, uh, a, lo a long lens, then the, the amount of parallax is probably going to be quite small. Uh, in this case, we've got quite a large parallax change going on because we're using a fairly wide lens, plus we've got something that's sat quite close into the foreground and quite, close in, uh, quite far in the background. So I'm going to set that to large parallax change. I'm going to set my approximate focal length. We don't have to be 100% accurate on this, but we're just a, an approximate one of what Mocha should be expecting. Is it going to be expecting something that's fairly wide, so uh, less than 35 mil, something that's sort of in the middle, the usual stage of uh, 35 to 70 mil, or something that's a little bit of a longer lens, so it's greater than 70 millimeters. So I've gone slightly wider, hit solve, and in a few seconds time, it tells me I've got a I've got a solve, and the solve quality is pretty good. It's 99%. So I can come in and uh, export out that camera now, and I can either take it out to After Effects or uh, FBX for uh, 3D um, 3D software or FBX for Nuke, or if you're using HitFilm, you can take it out as a HitFilm uh, composite shot. We're going to do straight to After Effects on this, so just copy that to the clipboard, and let's pop over into here. And now if I come up to Edit, right down near the bottom, I've got a Paste Mocha Mask. Sorry, Mocha, Mocha Camera, not Paste Mocha Mask. Paste Mocha Camera, that's what we were talking about. And what this is going to do is it's going to generate up a number of different null objects. And I'm just going to color code these so we can uh, easily see these ones here. Come in, color code those. Oh, a lovely lavender. That's not going to be very visible on the background there. Let's uh, try and find a cyan. There we go. So again, it uses the, uh, the surface to generate up where these points are going to be. But they could really be sort of anywhere we wanted them to be, really. And we could just sort of scrub through just to make sure that the camera solve that we've got is actually a camera solve that we can use. If things are sort of floating around a little bit, then we don't want to, uh, you know, we don't we don't want to use that. We want to probably retrack and resolve. There we go. Right. Uh, but I don't need all this information. I actually only need one point in the background, and that's what I'm going to take. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to hide all of these. Actually, just turn those off. Hit a little shy guy and turn that off so we don't have to look at all that anymore. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to link a, uh, a lens flare effect to this object in 3D. So I'm going to create a, uh, a light. Let's just do that the proper way, shall we, rather than the shortcut way. Uh, so I'm going to go layer, new, light. And it doesn't really matter in this, uh, this particular case what sort of uh, light it's going to be. Let's set it to 100%. I'm going to make a crazy blue. Here we go. And just hit OK on that. And because we don't have any 3D layers, um, it's not going to actually affect anything on the image at all. So let's uh, now come in and create a new solid. New solid layer. Make sure it's black. Boom. OK. And we will call this one our lens flare. OK. Now I'm going to use the uh, BCC Lights Lens Flare 3D. And this is, this is cool. I like, I like this. this is, uh, it comes in with just a, a sort of standard lens flare -y type thing. But let's take a look at our FX browser. Now this is something that's, um, that was in uh, BCC 9, I believe it's the first first time it was seen. It's an easy way of looking through 
our presets, our Boris Continuum Complete presets. So um, as sort of standard, all the BCC filters come in like a uh, uh, like with loads and loads of different presets. So it's actually quite tricky to sort of you know go through each each and every single one at a time and see exactly what they do. But with the uh, the FX browser, it makes it a little bit easier to get an overview of what kind of things that you're actually after. Uh, so here, I think I'm going to go with the uh, the soft flare coloured fog. Hit apply, and let's change this to screen. There we go. So we can start to see that we can position this around about around about here. And the colour's not exactly what I'm after, but we'll uh, we'll deal with that in just a moment. So let's open up this little bit here. So the uh, the lens flare 3D, the BCC lens flare 3D has tons and tons of options. And thankfully, with After Effects, most of these are kind of hidden away in drop down, so we can safely ignore them for uh, until we actually need to 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 deal with it. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on use comp camera. So that means it's going to use the After Effects camera to, uh, to help us with the positioning. Now, the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to change the light source. And instead of having that built in, we're going to use comp. So that's going to use the lights in the After Effects composition. So if I come in now and sort of start playing around and moving this light around, you can see it's going to create the uh, the lens flare based on where that light is, and this is absolutely fantastic if we've got sort of multiple lights going around in a uh, in an image and we don't have to sort of do multiple lens flares just to to pinpoint each individual light. Uh, but what we can also do with this is we can use our the position that we've got from the background track center here. I'm just going to copy that. So uh, Control or Command C and Control or Command C uh, V, sorry, onto the light just to paste that in. So what it's doing is it's then taking the position from the uh, from the 3D camera solve that we got for that null in the background, and it's this Z position here that's the important thing that we don't really want to um, mess around with. But all this other stuff, all the other X and Y positions, we can happily uh, mess around with without actually affecting the quality or the position of the lens. And you can see that's moving along quite nicely now with the, the image. But of course, things have changed up a little bit. Let's uh, go back into our lens flare. Things changed a bit from, from where we had our little preset. It was like a, a sort of purpley, foggy type thing, and now it's a blue, foggy type thing. Uh, and the reason for that is if we come down to the comp here, uh, our light source, sorry, uh, and it's the comp, it's using the light's intensity, which we can turn off, it's using the uh, scale from intensity, I'll turn that off, and using the light color, and I will turn that off as well. So now it's going back to uh, to how we had it previously. Uh, it's a bit bit too, uh, too bright at the moment, but we'll deal with that in just a moment. Uh, the other problem we've got is, of course, it is uh, as the runners go through, they completely ruin uh, any sort of yeah, idea that this is a real, uh, a real sort of sunshine. So, you know, it's usually at this point you start to keyframe things up, but uh, no, we're not going to do that. No, nope, it's far too much like hard work. What we're going to do is we're going to use this uh, control up here that's called the obscuration map layer. Uh, the great thing about all the uh, the Boris filters is they have such lovely descriptive titles. Um, so yeah, the ob obscuration map layer is is basically just saying, uh, well, let's let's pick a layer. We'll pick our, our woods in layer here, it's, and everything changes up really quickly there. It's basically just saying that when our RGB values or our alpha alpha values, or the RGB plus alpha or inverse alpha, so when the RGB values here go beyond a certain point, and it's at five at the moment, it's going to turn our effect off. So let's uh, let's reposition our lamp just a little bit here, so it's outside of the uh, outside the trees. And let's see what happens now. If I just delete that keyframe, let's render this through. What you should be able to see now is as the runners go past, 
what it's doing is it's triggering that value. As it triggers that value, it turns the, uh, the lens flare off for us. That's a really, really nice way of just saving us a whole load of time. There we go, just render that through nice and easy. I could spend a bit more time on this shot, but I've just realized what the, uh, the time actually is now, and we need, to, uh, we need to start moving on to the next one. But just to recap, what we've done with this is we've used Mocha to generate up just two straightforward tracks one track on the sign here and another track in the background and from that we've created a stabilized precom which we've been able to drop in a little animated man in and we've generated up a, a 3d camera solve as well which we've been able to use as the basis for our lens flare and because we've got that, that 3d camera data we can do a whole load more uh, stuff with that obviously anything that, that uses you know, 3D effects in, in After Effects, we can now use that same data for. But let's, uh, we need to start looking at our next shot, which is this one here. So this shot that we've got, uh, as I just ran preview that through, let's just fit that in there. This shot that I've got here is a, uh, a bit more of a, a beauty shot. So what the uh, the intention of this, uh, hopefully by the end of this this webinar, what we'll have done is we'll have started to have uh, improved some of the uh, the skin skin tones on this. So we're going to lift up some of the uh, let's zoom in just a wee bit. So we're going to lift up and reduce some of the lines under the eyes and around the mouth here. And because this was shot with quite a wide angle lens. We've also got a, a bit of distortion going on from the lens. So uh, you'll see that the face actually looks a bit flattened. Uh, we don't really like that. That's, that's not how the, uh, the model looked in the start. Uh, and it's not how it's going to look uh, after we've uh, finished up with it as well. So we're going to do a couple of different things for that. We're going to use both uh, some of the warp tools that we've got with uh, Boris Continuum Complete in After Effects, and we're also going to use the lens module in Mocha itself. So now we're back in Mocha. Let's open up our other piece of footage, which is here. OK, and one other thing that we was probably a little bit tricky to see as it was going through, uh, because of the, just simply because of the frame weight of the web, webinar, is that even though this is on a crane and it's craning down, there's still a little bit of uh, jitter and judder to the shot as well. So we're going to be smoothing some of that jitter and judder out. And it's that jitter and judder of this crane shot that's going to make things uh, a little bit trickier for us, or would potentially make things a little bit trickier for us uh, when we're doing the, the beauty uh, the beauty work on this. So the first thing I'm going to do, as before, is create a couple of tracks. Now, it's really important that these tracks are going to be solid because these are going to form the basis of pretty much the rest of the work that we do. So I'm going to make a background track. Let's, we're going to help to, uh, that's probably made a couple too many points there. There we go, just undo that. Yeah, I'm going to make a background track that we're going to use to help to stabilize stuff up. So let's just call this one background track. Uh, Doing a background track is also quite useful if we're doing roto work as well on sort of fast moving subjects where we can't get a, uh, a, a good hold of them. So just by doing a, a solid background track, we can then stabilize things out a little bit to help us with the roto work. But the other track that we need here is we need a good one on the face itself. Now, as I said right at the beginning of this webinar, I am a big fan. I've got a couple of too many things. Uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of keeping our track data and our shape data separate. So you notice again, when I've made this uh, this little shape up, I've not been, you know, super super highly critical of where things are on the edges. So I've just done a sort of fairly simple, fairly uh, sort of yeah fast 
little shape there, and I'm going to call this one uh, head track. There we go. I'm not going to touch any of the uh, default values down here. All I'm going to do is just track this forward, in fact, track both of these shapes forward. And what's going to happen is that uh, as the girl starts to move through, she's going to open up our mouth a little bit, and you should be able to see that the shape itself, because we've got shear turned on, the shape is able to sort of stretch a little bit with the way that that mouth is opening. And this is going to be really, really useful for when we start coming in and doing the, uh, the rest of the rotor work, the sort of final, uh, final rotor work. There we go. And we'll just, a few seconds just to let that last little bit track forwards. And this is also useful if she starts lifting up her head just a little bit, uh, because all of that is going to, yeah, all these sort of small movements are really, really painful if we're going to start uh, rotoring these by hand. But by letting Mocha do the hard work, it's going to make everything a whole lot easier. Uh, what I'm going to do is just uh, dump these all into a new folder, because everything, I'm going to trust that they were all fine, they all, it all looked fine. Let's just turn the surface and the grid on there, and let's just play that back. And I should be, I'm looking for any sort of strangeness in the, uh, in the grid. The grid seems to be holding quite steady, so I'm happy with that. So I'm going to turn off the tracking on all of those, turn off the visibility on those as well, and actually put the head track back in there. We go. Cool. So now I've got my track sorted out. What I can do is I can go in and actually make a much more sort of closer fitting mask. So I'm going to just again quickly just roto this, but I'm paying a bit more attention uh, to the edges now. Bring that up there. Zoom out just a wee bit again. There we go. And if I right click and just drag on any one of the points there on the on the X splines, that's going to soften everything up for me. There we go. Now obviously I would take a little bit longer, but actually that's that's not bad at all. So let's one let's call this one face mask. There we go. And instead of tracking this again, I'm just going to link this through to my head track. And if we play that back. You should see that's fitting in really quite nicely, even when she opens up her mouth a little bit. That's fitting in really nicely. Let's zoom in just to make sure that's actually all good. So there's a little bit there. So what I can do is just have a little keyframe there. And these keyframes that I'm doing, they're actually building on top of the track data. So I don't have to go in and sort of keyframe everything. I just keyframe the small little uh, small little bits where things are starting to to slip a little bit, and that's fine there. Cool. Okay, so this face mask we're going to use for tons and tons of different things. So it's really important that this is done uh, properly and nicely. I think this is this is fine. It's probably again a few more points than I would normally want to use on this but you know for the sake of uh, for the sake of the demo I think it's going to be fine and what I can do now is uh, I'm going to start to use this as the basis for uh, reshaping actually not reshaping for doing some of the lightning on the face here so let's uh, color code our face mask there we go color code that to orange and I'm going to create another couple of shapes. And this is where we're going to be doing the lightning. Lightening, sorry, not lightning. And again, we'll just use the right click little technique there just to soften that up. Now, because I'm going to be, all of these uh, things I'm lightening are sitting on the same, the same plane, I can use the add explain button here. And instead of creating up a new layer, what this is going to do is it's just going to come in and add another shape to the same 
to the same layer I've got over here. And I'm going to do that for the lines around the mouth as well. Get rid of that one. And do the same, one more on this side too. There we go. Should probably get rid of that as well. Excellent. And over there. So let's call this one Lighten. It's not a very descriptive thing, but it's uh, a bit more descriptive than, than layer four. And again, we're going to uh, link this to our main head track. And let's just scrub that through. And that's fitting in really nicely. Cool. Let's um, let's actually bring that over into After Effects now. We'll start doing a little bit of work on uh, using what we've got here. So I'm going to take out instead of exporting out this uh, tracking data, I'm going to export out this shape data. And I can either take out all the selected layers, or just, sorry, just the selected layers, or all visible layers, or all layers. Uh, and at the moment, I think I'm just going to take out the uh, selected layer and just copy that to the clipboard and pop back into After Effects. Okay, and what have we got on this adjustment layer? Absolutely nothing, fantastic. Well, let's uh, get rid of that. Actually, we're going to uh, tell you what we're going to do. Let's make a new adjustment layer. With all of this sort of work, I love working on adjustment layers. They give you just so much more uh, flexibility. So we're going to call this one Lighten Lines. And we'll go to Edit, Paste, Mocha Mask. Because we've got that sat in our clipboard, it's just going to come in. And if I zoom in a wee bit here, it's taking in all of our masks as regular After Effects masks. And they should be sitting in there nice and solidly. Cool. So what I can do now is I can start to use just a basic color correction, actually, just to start to lighten this stuff up, just to sort of reduce the uh, the evidence of those lines. So we're going to come in. We're going to use a curves, and I'm going to take this too far, just to show you what what we're doing. So we take that too far, and you can start to see that that is uh, definitely lighter. Let's change my blend mode over just to luminosity, so we keep the color in there. And now I can start to patch this in a little bit. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to lighten up the shadow areas without affecting uh, the highlights too much. There we go. And because these are, let's bring that again a little bit too high, and because these are regular after Effects marks that I've taken in using the uh, the Mocha Shape data, we can do everything that we can normally do with a uh, boom boom with a regular After Effects mask. So hit M twice, and it opens up all of the other different uh, things that we can do with marks. So let's come in and we'll just soften that out a little bit. And we can start to see the before and the after probably taking it a little bit too far here there we go we just want to sort of reduce those the signs of those shadows a little bit there we go nice that's a uh, a good start anyway and we can carry on to if if uh, she had more sort of problems like that we can we can sort of carry on and do a bit more work on that as well but Actually, that's not too bad. What I'll do probably here is just change the softness out just a little bit. Don't want to soften that too much. There we go. Right, and I could fiddle about with that for a bit longer, but I think you get the idea. So that's quite nice. And this is, um, yeah, it's a nice little technique for for all of these sort of yeah big shadows that we've got going on, even the shadow around this side of the nose as well, we can start to lift uh, lift that up just a little bit if it's a little bit too harsh. And the great thing about doing it this way is that we're not actually affecting the the texture of the skin at all. So 
so the uh, all of the texture of the skin stays the same. We're just sort of yeah mucking about with the the luminosity of it, just reducing those shadows up. Cool. So one of the big things that we had obviously was the uh, was what's going on with this wide angle lens and how it's compressing the the, the face out and not doing making it too flattering at all. So what I'm going to do is again back into um, back into Mocha. I start to recycle this little face mask that we've got here, and I'm going to come in and I'm going to make two more uh, mask shapes for this. I'm going to make a starting shape and an end shape for our warp, because we're going to use the warp to just suck everything in. So let's uh, come in and we'll just duplicate that one there, and I will call this one warp start and let's uh, start reducing uh, the number of different points that we've got. I'm going to turn on my uber key here and the uber key over on the uh, on the side what this is going to do is going to mean that I'm going to affect all of the keyframes across the entire range here so if I start to mess about with any one particular uh, keyframe with the uber key turned on that change is going to then uh, continue across all of the keyframes rather than if I had my uber key turned off it's just going to act as a regular animating keyframe we don't really want that and what I'm also going to do uh, aside from changing the color so you can see this a bit better maybe a bright cyan what I'm also going to do is I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to go to my spline I'm going to open up the spline as well uh, because with uh, Mocha 4.1, I believe, uh, we were able to work with open splines directly and export open splines directly from Mocha. So I'm going to take the, the top three points that I don't really need and just delete them. Now I'm going to duplicate up my warp start again and call this one warp end. Make this another color. maybe like a uh, bright purple and I'm going to use my transform tool up here and I'm going to use the transform tool to now take my original shape holding down the control or command key and just distorting that all the way in while sort of retaining the, the basic overall shape we sort of just distort that in just a little bit because we're going to be shrinking the face in just a bit Cool. I don't really need to do much more than that for this particular one. So what we can do now is go back to export. Oh, actually, before I do that, just to show you, because we have the Uber key turned on, it still kept the keyframes that we had previously. So let's uh, export out uh, our shape data again. Let's take all the visible layers and let's go copy to clipboard back into After Effects and let's create a new adjustment layer boom alright so we've got the adjustment layer let's go to our uh, BCC warp strangely enough under the warp filter actually I'll turn this off for a second because I want to just show you again uh, let's rename our, our thing let's uh, come in and go edit paste mocha mask and that's brought in our three masks. So it's brought in the uh, the, mar uh, the face mask, which is the overall one, uh, the warp start and the warp end. So let's just turn that to none because we don't want that face mask to be doing anything right now. And let's turn on our BCC warp. Okay, cool. So let's start to see what that's doing. Let's turn up my warp percentage. Ooh, oh, that's looking nice. Okay, so what it's doing at the moment is it's taking us from our warp start, which is this shape, to our warp end, which is the purple shape. Now, I wanted to actually constrain it, so I can say contain warp shape, and then you, this, this is why it's important to have my face mask in there, because that's helping to sort of constrain 
that area. So it's not sort of affecting all of the background anymore. It's just affecting that space there. Oh, that's, that's really nice. I'm sure she'd be very happy to see such a flattering image such as that. Um, let's bring that back there. What I can also do is go to, to pin edges to make sure that we don't have any sort of warping going on at the top. I can turn off point matching, that sometimes helps. If we take a look at the uh, add warp grid, you can see exactly what it's doing and how it's, how it's affecting things up. So generally speaking, I like to sort of go a little bit too far and then pull it back. It makes things a little bit, uh, a little bit easier to, to, to see what's going on. And we can change things like uh, anti-aliasing just to get a slightly better warp uh, and change our warp area as well. But the accuracy of medium and warp area of medium for this particular shot is actually works out pretty nicely. So if we do a quick RAM preview of that, what you should start to see is you should start to see that, uh, that we're, we're beginning to suck those edges in. And because we're using the nicely tracked data, we're not getting any sort of weird pops coming in all over the place uh, when it starts to, uh, well, yeah, when the, the camera starts to sway or the, the girl starts to change, move her head. We get this nice, consistent looking warp. So if we take a look at the, uh, the before and the after, before and after, if it's not exactly how, uh, how, we're, uh, how we want it, you know, we can always go back and start to uh, change up our, our shapes a little bit. But for now, I kind of like this one, like where we're going. So with that simple warp done, or not with simple warp, with the specific warp, I mean, going across the face, that still doesn't take out the fact that we've got um, like a, a ton of, uh, uh, of other lens warp going on, lens distortion going on in the frame itself. And I'm also acutely aware that we are running out of time. Um, so let's, uh, let's come over and have a little look at this now. Now, when we're dealing with uh, lens distortion, Mo has a fantastic little module here, uh, confusingly enough, called the Lens Module not confusing at all, it's actually a very sensible name for it. And this is going to help to, uh, to help to either, uh, when we're doing sort of inserts to, to sort of map stuff nicely to match the, uh, the distortion of the lens, or to help us take the lenses out a little bit. So uh, what we can do is we can use the lens, uh, the lens module here to locate lines, locate straight lines, and then tell Mocha uh, you know, what the distortion of that lens is going to be. Now, if I did locate lines on here, there are actually no uh, straight lines within this image, none at all. Well, there are, but there's nothing that's, that's uh, useful enough to be able to generate up lens data. So what we can do is we can use this, uh, this fun little trick. If I open up a, uh, let's save that one there. What I'm going to do is open up another piece of footage. This is just a, again, a simple little card that was shot with exactly the same, the same lenses, or the same lens. I can do a locate lines on that, and that is going to very, very easily give me the, uh, the lines that I need to generate up the, uh, the lens that I need here. So I'm just going to come through, select some straight lines here. I'm going to hit N in between to, to tell Mocha that I'm uh, making a new line. So N, then select a few of these, a few of these straight bits. And by doing this, what I'm doing is I'm telling, uh, I'm helping Mocha build up a, an idea of the shape uh, of this lens distortion. And we'll just do a few more because I know it's absolutely riveting watching me create lines like this. So N, we'll just do one more in the center or fairly close to the center. That wasn't quite it, there we go. Just Command or Control Z just to undo that. And what I can then do is say, we'll just uh, tell it what sort of um, distortion we've got. It's one, one parameter 
if we've just got like a regular thing or like two parameters if there's there's like a double distortion in there we'll hit calibrate on that and that's come up with a, a lovely little number for us here I'm gonna hit render and if we just have a look at the original let's zoom in on this the original and the undistorted hang on a sec let's do it so you can actually see it so the original and the undistorted original undistorted and this is very very cool so what I've actually got now is I've got this lens data that I can use and I can take out either a distortion map clip which looks something like this beautiful uh, so this is uh, this is cool if you're taking it out to to nuke you can use this in, in nuke to do the uh, understore or redistort for you or we can take it out to either Imagineer lens data or Mocha lens data for After Effects. Guess which one we're going to do? So copy that to the clipboard, pop into After Effects. Let's uh, create up a new adjustment layer. I love my adjustment layers. And we'll call this one lens. And all I have to do is go paste. And that brings in the Mocha lens effect here. And we can say either remove the distortion if we're taking it out from, from the plate, or if we need to apply the same lens distortion to, um, uh, to an image. Say, for example, we've got something that was uh, shot with quite a, a wide angle lens, so we're getting a bit of a fisheye type of thing. Any, any of that sort of um, distortion, if we just try to do a regular corner pin on that, it wouldn't match in properly. So that's why we'd use the apply distortion on that one there. But for this, we just want to remove the distortion. So before and after, just to help bring that out a little bit. So with our last few minutes that I have available to me, thankfully just in this webinar not in the world, uh, I'm going to come back into Mocha, do one final little thing, come back to our crane shot here, and let's go back into our background track yes the one we made so so long ago a little background track there it is cool and what I'm going to do is come into my stabilize module over here and the stabilize module is going to be where we're going to try and take out this little shake uh, the camera shake that we've got when the uh, the crane goes down so let's turn off some of this other stuff here, these overlays, so we can see it's a bit better. Now, what we could do is try and stabilize out all the motion with maximum smoothing. Let's just play that back. And this has the effect of just stabilizing out everything. So this takes all of our lovely little crane shot, all of that lovely movement that we spent so long uh, and so much, uh, so much money doing and just getting rid of it. Now, absolutely fantastic for doing sort of uh, you know paint work. Great to have a stabilized plate for that. Makes everything so much easier. But for this particular thing where we're just trying to take out the, uh, the sort of judder, not all that great. So we turn off maximum smoothing, and we only want to uh, take out the position data here. We don't really want to take out the rotation or the zoom. And we can choose to you know how how many frames it looks over to sort of smooth that out. And we're just going to leave it at the default here. And you start to see we've got a little bit of black coming in at the edges. So that means it's taking out and smoothing things out a little bit without actually stabilizing everything out uh, 100%. Now, the other cool thing we have is this little frame list. And uh, this is something I, I used to, uh, to do sort of manually. But now we can do it straight within, uh, within Mocha. All we have to do is hit plus on there. And that says, I want to make sure that this frame that we're looking at now is dead center. And then I'll go to my end frame here, and I'll have plus on that again. And that centers that frame one more time. So what it's going to do is it's still going to smooth things out, but it's going to, to make sure that we hit certain marks along the way. And this means that we don't really have to 
to do too much zooming if we're just wanting to take out just the tiniest amount of uh, camera camera shake. So there's a huge difference between having to zoom up, you know, 110 percent to get rid of all of this uh, black edges. Maybe zooming up 110 percent here. Oh, sorry, 102 percent to get rid of that there. So again, export out stabilized tracking data. Take this out as After Effects transform data. Copy that to the clipboard. One last trip into After Effects. I'm going to make one more pre-comp of this beauty here, and let's call this one Beauty One Pre-comp, and let's paste our data in. And now, if I take a look at that, you can see it's got position, scale, and rotation keyframe data, which will then go through and help to um, yeah, help to just stabilize out all of that other stuff there. Cool, so if we take a quick look at the uh, before and after, before and after, that's uh, one little trip there. There we go. And so in just in about 20 minutes, we've we've started to get a little bit further along the way with uh, completing this shot. And with that, unfortunately, I'm going to have to pass back over to uh, to Mary. My time is is done for now. But uh, uh, thank you very much for being part of this webinar. And if you need to to know any more sort of uh, stuff, then you can find it at uh, ImagineerSystems.com or CuriousTurtle.com as well. So Mary, thank you very much. Absolutely, thank you so much. And if you have any more questions about Mocha or we didn't get to one of your questions, please go to our forums at www.imagineersystems.com or you can contact support. We really appreciate you tuning in and have a wonderful day.